that is uh, really quite a pleasant hike in the hills in South Georgia, but of course it means more than that because this is uh, where Shackleton and Crean and Worsley came over the hill in a faster time, I think, than almost anybody has done it since. And it's eminently historical. So who that guy just up there, Jonathan, on board with us. This is uh, the early hours of the morning. On the far side of Fortuna Bay, they've heard the, uh, the whistle, the steam whistle, for the workers to come come into the whaling factory in Stromness, and they knew they were getting close. For about a thousand feet, we came down to the slope ease, we came on rocky road gradients, then across low hills, all rocks, the last got cleared this and onto the shore. From here, we could look up and see a faint, thin line, like a spider, zigzagging in places. Our tracks and the incredible face we descended, which was up, up across the bay. We passed several inquisitive gentoo penguins, yarn, 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 yarn. like little Charlie Chaplins, and many great sea elephants, until we came to the front of the great glacier, fortunately did not reach quite to the sea. There were long gravelly flats, debris of the glacier, almost like quicksands in which we sank halfway to our knees, which we did too, isn't it? The going was for good for about half a mile along the beach at the head of Fortuna Bay. Here we saw reindeer tracks and a dead sea elephant, shot by some sportsman. Then past some low cliff, and over rough country we made our way inland. As we ascended, the going became better. And now we look for the best way to Stromness Bay. Big fork sound with three whaling stations. Busvik, Stromness and Leith, all run by Norwegians. Leith and Stromness were nearer, but the question was, which was easy to get to? Sir Ernest decided for Stromness, so we bore a little further to the right. Soon we were going along in great style. Then suddenly, Crean fell through, up to his middle in ice water. We were crossing a lake without knowing it. And this is the very lake here. We pulled him out and hurriedly but gingerly made our way to the nearest raised surface. After this, about 11, I'll be getting on the time, a bit late. After this, about 11, we had a biscuit, some streamers, nut food, three or four lumps of sugar, and some snow. Cream was a bit cold, but otherwise, none would the worse for his ducking. This is, uh, Shackleton, Crean and Worsley, now we're reaching the final stages of their 36 hour trek across South Georgia, which had never been done before. They had no maps other than an outline map produced by Filchner's German expedition. Uh, but they did know, having heard the sound of the factory whistle, that uh, they were heading in the right direction. On again up rough country, which is what we're going to do now, till finally at 1.15 we were standing on a 3,000 foot summit. Well, exaggerating a bit I think. Looking down onto Stromness Bay, the two whalers, which could be zodiacs in our time, steaming across it looking like tiny insects on the water. We could also see that part of the whaling station. I yelled a wave to get against the skyline, but of course no one saw or heard. Uh, the point where Shackleton, Crean and Worsley saw the whaling station and for the second time shook hands. Each shook each other's hands because they knew they'd nearly finished this amazing journey. All they had to do then was to go down the quite steep slopes here along the plain and into the, the whaling station. And they could see the little whale catchers like little insects in the bay there. And they knew this is the first time they'd seen any other people for over a year and a half very hard to imagine. So we're going to follow their trail down carefully. It is quite a snowy, slippy day for us today, but what a wonderfully exciting thing to be retracing those steps. Beautiful. It was a very steep slope down towards the station, and I wanted to take it, but Sir Ernest thought it was too steep. So we bore to the left down a valley. Six years later to the month, I came down that slope with a crouching glissade about, for five, about 500 feet. I don't know whether we'll do that today. 
But anyway, this was these three guys were exactly on track, following them, and we're gonna I don't know if we're gonna slide down the far side, but we're gonna maybe go alongside the waterfall, which was frozen in May 1916, which they used a rope and a carpenter's ads to, to get down their final stage, uh, down onto the um, the floodplain of the, the um, leading to Stromness wedding station. And they also knew that once they got to Stromness, the lives of the men, the lives of the men at Elephant Island were standing a much better chance of being rescued, which actually didn't happen until about four months later. But uh, I would love to have seen their arrival in the wedding station here. We'll see the old remains of it, but you know the whaling guys must have been completely incredulous as to what was before their eyes. These three bearded, dirty men who'd done the huge, big journey across the roughest seas in the world. There they were at their doorsteps, so completely speechless they must have been. Nearly there.